Hello and welcome to this video on the newton raphson method. And we're going to use the newton raphson method to find the root of a cubic function. So in a previous section we looked at the bisection method, which is an example of an iterative function. And the newton raphson method is similar in that respect. We're going to take an initial guess at the root of the function, and we're going to use the newton raphson method to converge closer and closer to the actual solution. To carry out the newton raphson method, we need to know three things to begin with. First of all, we need to know the function that we're trying to uh, find the root for. And we'll call that f of x, a function in terms of x, for our example. We also need to know the derivative of that function, the function after it's been differentiated, and we'll express that as f dash x. Finally, we need to know an initial guess at where we think that root might lie. Now, our guess could be very bad. We'll find that the newton raphson method actually converges closer and closer to the correct result, even if our guess is quite far out. But we do need to start with an initial guess to begin with, and we're going to call that x naught. The formula for the newton raphson method looks something like this. x1 is equal to x naught minus the function of x where we've substituted in our guess, x naught, and that's divided by the derivative of our function where we've also substituted in that guess x naught as well. You'll notice the result of this method is x1. And x1 is a result that's going to be slightly closer to the actual root of x. And what we can do is we can repeat this process as many times as we like. We can repeat the same formula, but this time substituting x1 in as our guess, as it were, and that time we'll get x2 as a result. And then we can repeat substituting x2 into our equation to get x3, x4, and so forth. And each time, each iteration that we move through using this newton raphson method, we'll get closer and closer to the correct value for the root of our function, which we'll just call x. We'll never actually get a perfectly accurate result for x, um, but we will get something that is reasonably accurate, even after just a few iterations. So let's put this into practice with an example. And let's say we have this cubic function y equals x cubed minus 2x squared plus x minus 3. In this case, y is also a function of x. That polynomial is in terms of x. And so we could also write f of x is equal to that same polynomial expression. The newton raphson method also requires us to know the derivative of that function. And so we can differentiate that expression f of x to find f dash x, the differential, um, which in this case is 3x squared minus 4x plus 1. If you're not sure how to differentiate a polynomial expression, we've got other videos where we cover that. But in this case, we now know our original expression and also its derivative there. So just to backtrack a little bit, we have our function of x here, and it's a cubic expression. And represented on a graph, it will look like this, just as a sketch there. And we see that this function crosses the x-axis at some point between 0 and 3, but we don't know exactly where. If you've been following our other videos, we actually use this exact same expression using a different method called the bisection method, and we found actually the root lies somewhere around x equals 2.17. But for the sake of this example, let's pretend that we don't know that. Uh, let's say that we're going to take an initial guess that the root is somewhere around about 3, x equals 3. And so our initial guess, x naught equals 3. So let's apply this by using the newton raphson method 
to see whether we can converge on a more accurate value. So using the same formulation as before, we now have x1 equals 3, because we said our initial guess was going to be 3, minus uh, our function of x, but we're now substituting 3 into that function for x, divided by f dash x, again substituting 3 in, uh, in place of x. So if we write that out in full, we'll have something like this. And we find that x1 comes to 2.4375. So you see from our initial guess, we've now uh, moved towards what we actually know is, is the more accurate value, but we're closer to the correct value now um, because x1 is slightly less than our initial guess of 3. And what we're going to do is repeat that iteration. We're now going to substitute x1 into our formulation. Um, so let's do that here. We'll, we'll say now that x2 is equal to x1 minus f of x over f dash x, but this time substituting 2.4375 in for each uh, instance of x. And this time we find our result is 2.2130 for x2. And again, you get the idea, we can substitute x2 into the same formulation to find x3. So let's do that here. And when we evaluate this, we find x3 comes to 2.1756. I've cheated a little bit and used some computer software to solve this expression to uh, five decimal places. And the accurate value is something like this, x equals 2.17456. And that would be very difficult to determine um, algebraically, but we see that just by using a few iterations of the newton raphson method, we've actually got a value here that's very, very close um, to, the, to the precise accurate value that we've determined using a computer. So I hope you found this video useful on how we can use the newton raphson technique to converge on the root of a function whilst avoiding any particularly difficult mathematics. We've seen that it just involves substituting our guesses into each iteration of the original formula.